Tonight, an exclusive look at the bond between two families separated by war and 6,000 miles up until just over a week ago. The Goleta area is now home temporarily to the first family to arrive from war-torn Ukraine. Their message to us all, family first and pray for a miracle. We to this house. Bogdan Prohitko welcomes us into the home he shares with his wife, Tatiana, and their teenage daughter. What can you do to help uh, your relatives? Everything, right? <laughs> I have a lot of joy that I can help, especially at this difficult time. Hi. Hi. Tatiana's sister, Oksana, her husband, Maxim, and their four daughters also now call this home. To first say thanks for, the, for all help, for uh, all things that do for us. Like everything is okay, you live in nice city with beautiful people, you have everything, but you like under stress and anxiety because you see news and you read this news and it's not very pleasant. The Kornichuk family spent the past months in hell. Showed a of Russian vehicles, eight loud explosions in the city of Bucha destroyed. This is a violation of international law. Ukrainian President Zelensky speaking before the U.S. Bogdan translates for his brother-in-law. When the war started and everything just started happening, all this uh, bombing and all the news, he decided to uh, run for safety for, for children, for wife, so they don't have to go through this, uh, what we see right now in the news. More than a week later, they find themselves in a safe, loving community. However, their calm appearance belies a state of shock, pushing away stories of death and destruction. I understand maybe they have some orders, but they can, no to capture area, but not kill innocent people, civilian, old people, children, women. For me, it's shock. They tortured. The Kornichuks left relatives and friends behind, and they have no idea what's happening to their home. They share pictures of their lives before the war. Beautiful Rivne in winter snow, images of their travels, celebrations, their strong faith, and their daughter's musical talents. From what Americans know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine started in February. Oksana says it started months earlier. Speaking, uh, I remember Christmas Eve. We gathered with our friends and we, uh, we saw TV news and we watched that a lot of Russian traps were, uh, were um, near our border. And our friend told me that war will, will happen. The family spent a week holed up in Ukraine, but Russian forces were marching closer. Articles began popping up, offering civilian safety tips during wartime. That women shouldn't, for example, wash their hair, they should be dirty. Uh, and then I've had news from Bucha, I understand why. Having four daughters between the ages of 8 and 15 kept the family on alert. And on the freeway, lots of like bombed and ruined bombed cars and uh, if uh, they saw beautiful girl they took away from the car. Eventually the family was able to leave Ukraine and cross the border. In one car we drove to Poland nine people. After a couple hours you know she called. This family is one of the lucky ones. President Biden is allowing only 100,000 refugees into the U.S. for now. Tatiana persuaded her sister to travel to Mexico then cross the Tijuana border into California. They bought us tickets. We are grateful. Oksana and Maxime are mindful about the impacts on their children. We talk a lot. We try to think positive. For younger, it's easier. For oldest, it's maybe more difficult. We don't know when we return. Um, it's stress for all of us. Trips to the beach <laughs> and a pet rabbit are helping with the transition. Some friends are in Germany. 15-year-old Marta keeps up her spirits by connecting with friends online. 11-year-old Anna and 8-year-old Samir both love ice cream and swimming in the community pool. In and out. And Sophia, who's 14, has discovered a love of in and out and Starbucks. Each is excited to start school here. But this life lesson has given Marta the wisdom of an adult. I think the most important thing in your life is your relationship uh, with your friends and family because you close the stuff, uh, you can uh, less, uh, lose it in one second. Will you our home, our 
everything in one day. And the Cornichucks hope to find work in Santa Barbara County and they own their rent their own home. They're hoping that will happen. Their humanitarian parole lasts for 323 days, just shy of one year.